Hello everyone and welcome to the To Be Continued Book Club. My name is Allison and today we're going to read Switched by Bruce Hale. This book is about 12 year old Parker who hates messes and loves when things are organized. While his older sister is traveling abroad for a semester, he is put in charge of her golden doodle, Boof. When an intense round of tug of war leaves them both with bumped heads, Parker and Boof wake up to the biggest disaster yet. They've switched bodies. Chapter one, powder blue rabies. It had taken all afternoon to set up, but it only took five minutes for the dog to destroy everything. As soon as everyone else had left the house on errands, Parker Pitts had hustled like mad, trying to make everything perfect for the farewell party for his big sister, Billy. He'd vacuumed, tidied, and dusted the whole downstairs, much more thoroughly than Mom ever had. He'd festooned the dining room with blue streamers, party hats, and musical notes cut from shiny golden paper. Heck, he'd even gotten their neighbor, Mrs. Johnston, to drive him to pick up a cake from the bakery. It was powder blue, Billy's favorite color decorated with musical notations and an edible microphone on top. All his idea. The cake sat on the table. His mom would pick up the Thai takeout on her way home. All was perfect, just the way Parker liked things to be. Restless, he readjusted the place settings he'd made from Dad's scratched vinyl records and repositioned the bass clef centerpiece, bass clef centerpiece just so. He was ready. Everything was set to make Billy send off for her semester abroad truly a magical experience. As six o'clock struck, his mom and dad's cars pulled into the driveway almost simultaneously. That alone made it a red letter day. Parker couldn't remember the last time they'd both been home for dinner together. Gee, and all it took to make this rare event happen was one of their kids leaving town. At the thunk thunk of car doors and the happy chatter of everyone coming up the walkway, Parker smiled. He loved how his family was a rainbow of color, from his mahogany skin dad to his wheat skin mom, with he and Billy falling somewhere in between. His grandma used to be on the walnut colored end of the spectrum, but with an effort, he forced away the thought of her. What you didn't think about couldn't hurt you. The front door swung open. We're home, Mom called. Right away, the clickety-clack of doggy toenails scrabbled on the entryway's wooden floor. Thunderous footfalls and thuds from bumped furniture marked the progress of Boof, Billy's shaggy golden noodle. Parker gritted his teeth. That dog. He burst into the dining room like a dirty blonde hurricane. Making straight for Parker, the dog reared up on his hind legs, planted two massive paws on Parker's chest, and bathed his face with a tongue funkier than 50 weeks worth of dirty gym socks. Parker staggered back. Yuck! Twisting away from the creature, he swabbed at his slimy face with worm. Now he'd have to go wash again. Bad dog! Down! Nothing he said seemed to sink in. Of course, that wasn't surprising, given that Boof had plunk flunked out of the perfect puppy academy, and that Billy rarely bothered to reinforce the few commands the dog did learn. Boof jumped up again. This time, one of his sharp toenails caught on Parker's shirt pocket. When Parker tried to shove the dog away, the fabric tore with a loud rip. His favorite Star Wars t-shirt, wrecked. Parker's face flushed hot. Bills, he cried, get this thing away from me. Bored of jumping, Boof thrust his nose into Parker's crotch and took a loud, deep whiff. Parker raised a knee, spinning away. Billy! Gliding into the room like a long-necked princess in ripped jeans and an explosion of curls, Billy patted her thighs. Come here, Boofy Boof. Is the widow puppy bugging my widow brother? Is he? The mop-haired dog swapped his tail back and forth, knocking party paper hats off the chair and onto the floor. Amber eyes shining, he patted over to Billy and licked her face up one side and down in the other. Parker shuddered. Little puppy? He weighs almost as much as I do. He collected the hats, wondering if they'd be contaminated by dog germs. Could you sterilize paper hats? Just then, Billy noticed the decorations. Her mouth fell open in an O, and her hazel eyes widened. For me? Parker nodded. Oh, P-Man, you're the best! She beamed so broadly her eyes disappeared into slits. Rushing forward, Billy gave him a fierce hug. I'm going to miss you, bro. Yeah, I know, said Parker, ducking his head. His throat tightened. Though she was four years older and technically his half-sister, that didn't matter. Ever since Grandma Mimi had helped them bridge their differences five years ago, Parker and Billy had been pretty tight. He was really going to miss her. Of course, if he admitted this to Billy, her head would swell so big she'd never fit through the airplane door. So he let her guess. Oh, and that cake, she squealed, squeezing her hands together. Total coolness! Parker couldn't hide his grin. Thought you'd like it, he mumbled. Then his skin prickled with drying dog slobber and he shivered. Um, be right back. Parker hurried into the kitchen and blasted the hot water, vigorously scrubbing his face and hands with soap. Too bad Boof wasn't like the animals from one of his favorite fantasy tales, all helpful and full of natural wisdom. He was no Aslan of Narnia. In fact, as far as Parker could tell, this dog's wisdom consisted primarily of knowing which cat poop was the crunchiest. Did you tidy up around here again? asked his mom, setting some takeout bags on the counter. She squeezed his shoulders and smooched the back of his head as he washed, as you'd expect of the city's top realtor. realtor. She was impeccably turned out today in a copper-colored dress that matched the highlights in her hair. You really didn't have to. Parker shrugged. I wanted to. 
drying his face with a fresh dish towel, he reflected that it felt more like he had to. Ever since Mimi, well, ever since then, he really wanted to keep things at home clean and well-ordered. It made him feel better. And like Mimi always used to say, a tidy room makes for a tidy mind. At the thought of his grandma, Parker's lips clamped tight and his chest felt heavier than a mountain of regrets. She should have been here tonight. His Mimi loved a party. In that moment, Parker missed her like a beached whale missed the waves. He sucked in a ragged breath, casting around for something else to clean. Just then, his dad sauntered into the kitchen. As usual, his tie was askew, his cobalt shirt looked like it had never met an iron, and his tweed jacket was rumpled. The overall effect was like an unmade bed with a pot belly. What's the word, bird? he asked. Good day today? Not bad. Parker sponged up the spilled water around the sink, hiding a shy smile. He loved when his dad called him bird, the nickname of Charlie Parker, an old-timey sax player he was named after. In fact, his dad was such a jazz fan, he and his first wife had named Billy after some long-ago singer. Between Dad's music professor job and Billy's talents, it was a tuneful household, to say the least. Mmm, that smells good, Parker's dad rummaged in one of the takeout bags, cracking open a cardboard container and lifting out some flat noodles. Pad thai with chicken, he slurped down the noodles and went back for more. And spring rolls and shrimp curry and garlic eggplant, said his mom. She hip-checked her husband, swatting him with his hand away from the food. All her favorites. Belatedly, Parker detected the rich aromas of Thai food, lemongrass, garlic, fish sauce, Somehow, he was always the last to notice smells. Would, wow, you guys did all this for me? Billy stood in the doorway, a mile-wide smile splitting her face. I didn't expect a party. It's not every day my little girl goes off to a fancy Irish performing arts school, said Parker's dad. Dad, I'm not a... Billy began. But whatever she'd intended to say was drowned out by a tremendous crash from the dining room behind her. What was that? asked Parker. Billy spun around. Boof! Rushing to the doorway and peering past his sister's shoulder, Parker witnessed a sight that turned his blood colder than a holiday on the ice planet Hoth. His breath died in his throat. Somehow, Boof had clambered up onto the table, destroying the centerpiece and scattering the place settings. Legs braced wide, he was gobbling up Billy's cake with doggy glee. No! cried Parker. Bad dog! yelled Billy. They rushed into the room. Boof's head flew up. His eyes were wild, and his muzzle was thick with frosting, making it look like he had a case of powder blue rabies. A crepe paper streamer dangled from his neck like a feather boa. Uh, eyeing the humans charging toward him, the dog seemed to think it was all some kind of glorious game. He gave a puppy bow, chest low, tail wagging. Then, with a loud woof, he bounded off the table and tore from the room. Billy gave chase. Parker froze, astonished, uh, astonishment rooting him in praise. He gaped at the wreckage. The bass cleft centerpiece was bent in half. Two of the vinyl records had shattered, and the cake! The cake was a blue and yellow ruin punctuated with paw prints. As he watched, a clump of frosting dropped off the edge of the table and landed on the floor with a plop. Parker's fists balled, his jaw clenched. His skin itched all over with the burning need to clean up this awful mess right now, right after he strangled that rotten dog. Then, from the corner of his eye, a flash of violet light caught his attention. Parker did a double take. It looked almost like one of the items on the hutch, a carving of the Yoruba trickster god issue that Mimi had given him, was glowing. A wave of goose slush rippled across his shoulders. No way, he muttered, squeezing his eyes shut. This kind of thing only happened in the movies. Sure enough, when he looked again, the glow had gone. Just a trick of the light. Oh, honey, his mom came up behind him and rested a hand on his shoulder. It's okay. Really, it is. Parker was too busy grappling with his warring impulses. Clean or kill. <laughs> to look up at her. But he knew she'd be wearing that worried expression she often displayed whenever he got into cleaning mode. Ugh, that knucklehead dog. His dad joined them. For a while there, I thought he was learning, but I swear he's getting worse. Dogs can sense big changes, said his mom. Maybe this is just normal acting out. Normal acting out, said Parker, picking up a fallen streamer. Yeah, right, because normal dogs wreck parties. Normal dogs climb onto tables and eat cakes. His mom sent him a tight lip look, like she disapproved of his sarcasm, but was cutting him some slack. Dad shook his head ruefully. I told Tina it was a bad idea to give Bailey a dog, especially with her semester abroad coming up so soon. And since when has your fancy pants ex ever listened to you? The edge in Parker's mom's voice was sharp enough to slice stale bread. Tina loves to spoil her, when she happens to remember that Billy exists. Parker's sister poked his head through the, her head through the doorway. Where's Booth? You lost him, asked Mom. He can't have gone far. Parker's dad planted his hands on his hips, scanning the area. From the kitchen came the rustle of a plastic bag and some serious crunching noises. All four heads turned. The food! yelled Parker. Feet unfrozen, he hurtled past his parents, back into the kitchen. What he saw sent a hot shot of adrenaline back, blasting through his body. Booth's paws rested on the counter, and the handles of a plastic takeout bag were disappearing down his gullet like a hobbit into its hole. No, no, no! Parker charged forward. He snatched at the bag, but missed when Booth lunged away and galloped past. With a wordless cry, Parker dashed after him. From behind came his dad's shout. What? Not the pad's high! 
Parker's eyes narrowed. Two impulses wrestled inside him. He burned to get his hands on that mutt, and he yearned to clean up the mess the dog had left. For now, stopping the doggy demolition derby came first. Down the hallway he pounded, chasing the blonde blur of Boof. The dog glanced back with one wild, white-rimmed eye. He was enjoying this. And then they rounded the corner, and Billy stepped out, arms spread wide. Gotcha! The dog's paws skidded. Before Boof could slip away, she snagged his collar, yanking him to a halt. Bad Boofy! As Parker caught up, he witnessed the last of the bag disappearing into the dog's mouth. Your Boofy ate our dinner, he said. Oh no. Taking the beast's shaggy head between her hands, Billy bent down to look into his amber eyes. All of it? The noodles. Yikes. He swallowed the bag whole, said Parker, and most of the container. Billy's face blanched. Call the vet. We've got to get it out of him. He might die. Boof's tail thumped against the floor. He licked her face with what looked like yards of tongue. Yeah, seems like he's thinking fast, said Parker. Together, they closed the dog in his crate so he couldn't destroy anything else. After some initial whining, Boof turned around three times, flopped down with a grunt, and began gently gnawing on his bedding. Dad phoned the vet. Collapsing onto a kitchen chair, Parker stared at the floor. His heart thudded dully in his chest. Ruined, he said. All ruined! Billy squatted beside him, rubbing his back in gentle circles. Come on, P-Man, we've still got the rest of the Thai food, and I bet we could salvage some cake. Parker couldn't meet her gaze. It's a puppy apocalypse, he quivered at the thought of the mess. It made him itch like foxtails under the skin. Not another second. Parker surged to his feet and fetched a fresh sponge, a roll of paper towels, some kitchen gloves, and a garbage bag. With a heavy sigh, he set to work, cleaning up. If you'd like to know what happens with Parker and Boof, feel free to check out this book, Switched, from any of our library locations. Thanks for joining me!